Hey there everybody, how are you today? This is Lisa with I Need That To Prep and today I just wanted to talk really quickly about the four, let me back, back that up, the five most influential books that I read when I first started my prepping journey. And I know some of you here that watch my channel are have been doing this for years and there's a lot of you who are like me that just maybe started a year or two ago and just have really been accelerating in their learning process. So I wanted to make sure I did this quick video on the five most influential books on survival and prepping. So um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you subscribe to it below and um, I'll get started. So first one, Bushcraft 101. This is an awesome, awesome book, you guys. This one is actually written by Dave Canterbury. Um, great, great book. It's been around for a long time. Um, it's not that many pages. It's only, um, let's see, it's about 220. Well, if you include the recipes, it's about, let's see how many pages it is. 232 pages, okay? So it's packed full of information. Um, and this, you know, this is a great book. Um, it goes through, I'll read some of the table contents for you. It goes over your pack, what you should have in it, your tools. Um, chapter three is rope cordage, webbings and knots. Chapter four is containers and cooking tools. Chapter five is coverage. So that's gonna talk about all your um, tarps and tents and emergency thermal blankets and all that kind of stuff that you're going to need to keep you warm or if you find yourself out in the wilderness um, combustion that's going to be your lighters your fire starters um, your fire cubes fire sticks all that kind of stuff um, one of the best things and, and i think what makes this book so popular is because bushcraft skills is quite a um a skill to have i mean living out in the wilderness um Pretty, pretty rugged topic. So make sure, um, you know, I'm always trying to find out new ways because I, I, you guys, some of you know me quite, some of you know me better than others, but I'm a camper, I'm a fisherman, I'm always out in the wilderness. So this is the kind of stuff that I absolutely love. So Bushcraft 101, awesome book. Next one, Preppers, Long-Term Survival Guide. This one's really cool because this is more like off-grid, a lot of a lot of off-grid strategies to it. You have probably heard that term a lot, um, you know, when referring to survival and prepping because, you know, we're always assuming on a, in a survival situation that, you know, it's complete chaos, no electricity, um, you know, whatever. It's just, just, just mass chaos. So, you know, trying to figure out, um, I know one of the things that was really good for me when I first started was I couldn't even think of the different scenarios that were possibly, um, you know, would possibly happen in a survival situation because you can't possibly think of everything. And that's what's really good about this book. Um, it talks about a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, some of the chapters in here, um, again, this is only about a 200 page book, a little shorter than the other one. This, um, this talks about, starts off with learning about history, talks about chapter two is on water, then food, medicine, hygiene, staying warm, security. Security is a big thing. I, I think um, maybe we don't talk about this enough and I'm getting much more better at learning about this as well, but home security. I think the very first thing that you're gonna do um, if martial law is imposed, you, you, you're gonna be told to stay in your house, right? Or like the in-home stay orders or stay-at-home orders in California or Iowa. That was pretty weird. That was like the closest thing we've ever had to martial law, right? It was pretty crazy. So you're gonna batten down the hatches at your house. So how do you make sure that, you know, your house is secure from people that are wanting to loot and come in and get your stuff? That's one thing, and I'll talk more about this concept. Preppers tend to be really low key, you know, not announcing it to a lot of people, not showing their neighbors, you know. Um, <laughs> there's a couple different philosophies to it, but because if shit hits the fan and you're the only one that's prepping on your block, guess 
who Mr. Neighbor's going to come to to ask for food for their family if their family's starving, right? So it's kind of one of those things where um, some people, some preppers have a little bit of a secrecy about it and others are more of, yeah, let's get the whole community involved. Let's, so there's different types of um, group versus solo survival um, concepts. I actually wrote a blog post on that earlier. I'll have it in um, the links below and turn on the related articles to this post or to this video. Um, but anyways, there's all kinds of stuff in here. Very cool book. Um, this talks about community uh, prepping and survival plans in here. So um, if you're on that camp and you think that's where you would want to go in a chaotic situation, this book's great to read. Um, next one, probably the most popular um, book, prepping book, survival handbook, um, I should say out there right now. It's been out there for a while. This is the third edition. It's written by John Wiseman, John Lofty Wiseman. Awesome, awesome stuff. As you can see, it's very, very thick. This book is actually about, let's see, guys, this is like a 600 page survival guide. I mean, this is no joke, right? I mean, if I look at the essential or the, um, the table of contents on this one, here's kind of what you're gonna get. You're gonna get the essential strategy, uh, climate and terrain, food, camp craft, reading the signs, on the move. On the move is an interesting chapter because I think, I talk a lot about this a lot and I, or I, and I write about it a lot because when we talk about bug out bags and bug out vehicles and you know how, how are you going to get from one place to the other there's going to be a period of time where i think that i'm going to leave my house grab my bug out bag and i'm going to go right i'm going to go to a a, a, a a safer place um or um, i'm going to head up to the mountains and however i get there in a in a, in a vehicle uh what, whatever that is um i mean there's going to be that certain period of time where you're on the move right and so there's these really cool strategies that he has in this book about that um, and then of course health first aid that's a really important topic um, survival at sea um, interesting that's like that's really neat I never really thought about that but that could pertain to people who live by the coast possibly I don't live by the coast the mountains are um, well the, the, the coast is only about three hours from me but um, the mountains I'd much rather go there if anything um, um, then anyways, it goes through all kinds of, and then urban survival does, and then disasters. So this book on the, the last, uh, chapter on disaster is called, um, on the page 624. This is a one that goes into, um, scenarios like, um, for example, he talks about fire, um, huh funny we should talk about fire because we we are currently I'm in California Clovis California and I'm very close to the creek fire that just has burned has burned over 300,000 acres in the past like three weeks it's really sad what's happened but forest fires right um, that's one of the actual sections in this chapter um, chemical and biological warfare gases and chemicals flooding hurricanes tornadoes lightning nuclear explosions right I mean everything you could think of this is an awesome awesome book um, I would highly recommend you get this um, you know and, and that's half the battle you guys is reading I, when you start prepping you don't realize just how much information or how much stuff there is I mean you think food water right that's what you think and and that's just nothing wrong with that but there are so much more the only the reason you think that is because you don't know any better so you, there's all these situations that you have to prepare for and there's all this gear that you that you should get and things like that so it's really fun when you start reading these books because it completely opens up your mind to this whole concept um the next one is my favorite les stroud survive is what it's called I have a little bit of affinity to this um, particular person because I'll tell you a quick story. Um, uh, this was a TV series that was on, I, don't, um, I can't, it was, it was The Survivor Man, right? That's what it was called. And it, it aired, I don't remember, a couple uh, for a couple years. Um, and this was what was really exciting about it though. At the time, my father 
and my brother were part of the Madera County search and rescue team. And since we're based up here in the Sierras, which is close to Yosemite National Park, only two, two, uh, two hours away from my house where I'm sitting right now filming this, and only a couple hours, of course, from the John Muir Trail, which, you know, we have some pretty um, big, big things happening over here. So Les Stroud actually came and filmed one of the episodes of Survivor Man in the um, uh, Sierra Nevadas here. And my dad and my brother were actually on that episode. And so I was so excited, it was so cool. I remember the family gathered around on that episode and they basically dropped Les Stroud off in the middle of the Sierras. And my dad was part of the horseback uh, team because I was raised on a cattle ranch, as you might know, so we have horses. And I took the horses up and they showed him on horseback and what you would do if you were on horseback. And then my brother was out there with his compass and navigation, because a lot of what they do in search and rescue is they teach you about um, land navigation and, and navigating through a compass if, with a compass if you get lost and that sort of thing. So anyways, this is an awesome book because it's it, taking that concept of if you get lost in the woods, how are you gonna survive, right? So um, you all know Bear Girls. Bear Girls is probably his number one competition, but it's the same kind of concept. Very cool book if you like that whole um, survivor man, you know, naked and afraid, you know, how would you survive? This is a great book. Fun, good to read, but great, great practical information. And my last one is kind of a, kind of off the beaten path, but very cool because it stems, it kind of starts here with this book and then these all came later. So I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this called The Lost Ways. And it's kind of, it's, it's just this this paperback book and, and, and you can't get it on Amazon. It's, it's a pretty unique book. I have the link below, but this goes way back. It's so cool because it goes, imagine we're in a society today where we have electricity and refrigeration and all those things that we take for granted today. These people didn't have way back then in the 18, in the settler days, right? In the 1800s and things like that. So this book goes through all of that kind of stuff and it really, really is neat. So let me give you an example of the table of contents on this book. So this book um, starts about, starts off with how the early pioneers built their self-feeding fires. So you can Google self-feeding fires and it's, it's kind of one of those lost arts that, um, you know, people don't do as much or at least here today they don't um but um it's cool if you could really build a self-feeding fire that's one thing that i would really like to learn i haven't learned how to do it but i'm going to use this book when that time comes there's just there's so many things on my list um you can't possibly learn everything all at once but um self-feeding fires um it talks about survival food of the u.s civil war very cool how to and one of those pieces was hardtack biscuits and i would love to learn how to make these i haven't quite got into recipes of how I, how um, to make pemmican pemmican is something that's talked about in here too if you haven't heard of pemmican pemmican is this i've heard it's just absolutely not great at all it's like lard and like berries it's what the indians used to eat um it's, it's, it's just this weird concoction basically that keeps your body full of nutrients if you're in a survival situation, but it's in here. Like they have a recipe, it's so cool. Um, and there's a whole ton of recipes from the late 1800s in here that, um, that, that's in this book. Um, then they talk about, then here's pemmican. Um, there's a um, step-by-step -step guide on how to build a smokehouse. Smokehouses are old, old school, and I have no idea how to build a smokehouse. That would be kind of fun, but gosh, it sounds like a lot of work to me, I don't know. But um, you can do that in here. Um, how they purified water and filtered water back in those days. Um, there is just so much stuff in here. Wild foraging for plants, that's another thing. Because if you really think about it, if you're out in the woods or, or you're out in the, in, the, in the wilderness and you um, can't find, um, you know, food or whatever it is you need, it's food especially, but they talk about wild craft at your table and how you can edible plants, right? And that's a big survival um, 
section. I mean, you can find websites just on edible food and plants, but it's, it's really neat. This whole book goes through that. And then talking about hunting and trapping is in here. Um, the Ancestor's Guide to Root Cellars. Root cellars are very cool. I live in a place, I live in the kind of the suburbs. I don't have a big plot of land that I can build a root cellar on. So root cellars don't work for me, but if you're somewhere where you have some land and and you have space to do that, it actually goes through and talks about building uh, root cellars and the right conditions for it. Um, then it goes through some navigation and it talks about, I mean, there's so much stuff in here, knives, weapons, guns, um, wood burning, uh, wood in, wood installing, wait, temporary installing a wood burning stove during emergencies, right? Um, how to make soap, okay, at home. I mean, there's just so much cool stuff in here, you guys. You absolutely gotta have this book. It goes, this is written by an author called Claude Davis. And um, he's got a couple different books out. Um, I'll put a couple links down here. But I absolutely love this book. Um, you got to get this book because it just kind of is the makes you think maybe we should go back to that time. I mean, maybe if you learn some of these skills that are in the lost ways, then, you know, there's no way that living without electricity is going to be a problem for you. So it's kind of that whole home goes back to that whole homesteading concept um, and living off the grid. So anyways, uh, those are my top five most influential books in survival and prepping. I hope you enjoyed that. Get the links below and, um, thanks for watching and, um, have a great day and we'll see you on the next one.